how surreal has this day been for you when you first stepped foot on Marquette's campus? Did you ever envision a day like this? Man, no. Um, when I stepped foot on Marquette's campus, I can't say that I was ever really thought like I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame, like I'm coming here to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, it was get better every single day. And um, I think that's a testament to what Marquette is, is you just show up and you have the tools, you have the infrastructure. Obviously, you have to put the work in, but it's there for you. And you could obtain a goal that you didn't even know you were reaching for. You know, it was just every single day trying to be better than the next. You see Jarrell in the house tonight. You probably got some other teammates in the house. What, what's that mean to you? Um, it means a lot. You know, you don't do this without your teammates. You don't do this without your coaching staff. Um, and so credit goes to them and, and, and thanks and love and support. And But Rel, you know, Rel was always that one guy that I, I said this earlier today that he um, – he really motivated, really pushed me um, because I came in and I thought that I was tough. You know, I am tough. I, w I knew I was, you know, but like he had a whole other m level of competitiveness to him and drive. And, you know, I I, I felt like as you know, we, we just kind of pushed each other. And, you know, without rail, I don't know if I ever get to this point. You know, maybe I do. But, you know, I'm glad that he was there. Wes. Oh. Uh, Pablo Iglesias with uh, 27 News out of Madison. First off, congratulations on on this day. And, and secondly, you know, when going back even further from the first question, looking at to who you were as the memorial kid, um, just wanting a chance, all those types of things. Looking back at who that kid was, how proud are you to see what this journey has uh, taken taken you along? Man, it's really surreal because I grew up loving soccer. <laughs> you know, like I played soccer. I love soccer. I still love soccer. Um, you know, basketball was something that was natural. You know, you could say it was because of my mom and dad, you know, great gene pool there. Um, but like, I just love the game of basketball as well. And so like, I really did it because I loved it. You know, I did it because it was fun. And, you know, I just got addicted to working and, and playing and competing. And so I don't know. Like this, it, it was just like I just loved the game and never thought that it would take me to this. You know, I always wanted to be in the NBA. I always did. But I never really thought about the process to get there. I just wanted to play. I just wanted to play. I just wanted to work if they're wherever they were at. And um, along the way, meet some great people and attend a university like Marquette, you know, and before that win a state championship at Memorial, like those things just was icing on the cake. And I started to love it even more and, and get in love with the game even more. And I don't know what to tell that kid. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I have no idea. I just, it's, it's a surreal day. Um, Wes, just what do you remember most from your time at Marquette when you were here? You know what, there was a big three that just happened out there before the before the half and it, the roar. You know, that's one thing that I, I take away. You know, the, the memories on the court, the memories off the court, you know, the, the, the relationships built, but man, that roar out there, you know, I never had the, the pleasure to play in here, but you know, Bradley Center, I, I miss those days. You know, and that's, I guess that was my takeaway is the fans, the community, you know, the love of Marquette. When you came out of high school, it was a big deal when you picked here, the name, the history of the family and all that kind of stuff. And you were kind of treat, you were probably treated like a star a bit in high school. Why did you have it inside you when you did nothing but produce here, but you weren't drafted and you've had to plow away for this NBA career? What was instilled in you, I guess? that let you keep plugging away when a lot of people thought you were a big deal and you could have gotten caught up in that? Um, the people around you. You know, I credit, I credit all those that kept me grounded, that kept me motivated. And like I was saying, I just love basketball. I love to play. I love to compete. And, you know, probably some of that stubbornness that I got from my mom 
I guess my dad's stubborn too. Um, I guess it runs in the family that just that competitive drive, you know, and then coming through Marquette, there was nothing that I wasn't afraid of. You know, we had did everything. You know, we had workouts of pushing and pulling Hummer SUVs. And, you know, there was nothing that was going to take place on a basketball court that I didn't feel prepared for. And that's a testament to my coaches and my teammates. And then, like I said, I got to credit Jarrell as well. You know, I'm going against him every single day. To me, there wasn't a bigger dog. So, you know, going in the draft workouts and, and having to do all that, I, I've already done that. I mean, again, we've always heard about dad and mom, but to this morning you talked about your grandma and yeah. that's how special the day is for a couple of reasons. But uh, that may be an underappreciated part of your story. Just talk a little bit about what she instilled in you and how it does tie to today. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a bigger Marquette f fan than my grandmother. She stayed up, watched every single game. You know, and even before that, like if I close my eyes, I can, when I was in high school, I can see right where she was standing and cheering. If I close my eyes, I know right where she was sitting um, at the Bradley Center. And she was just that support, that, that tough love, that genuine love, unconditional love. But she wasn't going to baby you, but she was going to let you know that it was going to be okay. And, you know, she had a way of calming me down in situations that only she could do, you know. And there was nights when I was struggling uh, and I could just go over to her house. You know, one of the big reasons why I came to Marquette was because she lived here as well. And so we kind of had each other. And I think that's really where our bond got tighter. And um, she was available for whatever and always my biggest fan, and I leaned on that. I leaned on that when I was working out and I was tired and I wanted to stop. I leaned on it when my shot wasn't falling because all she cared about was rebounding. I said, she was, I can just hear her say, rebound, rebound. And for the longest part of um, my career, all of it really, when I try to get activated into a game, my first thing is to go get a rebound. Like, once I got a rebound, then I felt activated into the basketball game. And, um, yeah, lost her a few years back. And uh, today's her birthday. And I know I feel her. And I'm just grateful of uh, the time that I had with her and for it to be here you know, as much as it was. And you mentioned the soccer you know, your career's gone on a while here. Milwaukee's getting a pro soccer team in a year or two. It might turn <laughs> out perfectly. Goalie. I could only be goalie at this point. I could, but don't tempt me. <laughs> don't tempt me. Well, first off, congratulations. And secondly, knowing that it's your grandmother's birthday, when you were standing midcourt, it was hard not to see that you were getting a little emotional looking around at the crowd. I mean, what was going through your head in that moment and maybe was bringing up some of those emotions? Just wishing that she was here, you know. Um, but again, like the the roar, the crowd, just being there, like ah, uh, man, that just brings joy and happiness, and just that thrill of competing with your brothers and your family in the crowd, and you know, for a community that follows you, and you know, these same students that you you see on the daily, you know, they're up there, they're freezing. <laughs> you know, they're outside at 2 in the morning waiting to come in and watch you compete. You've practiced for four days <laughs> of hard practices, and, you know, you finally get that time to to go out there and, and execute and, and, and perform for those that, 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 that love you and support you. Yeah, that's – played a lot of basketball games. Um, the highest level, dream, dream come true. You know, there's still nothing like that, that uh, that feeling. Wes, you obviously don't play for the Bucks anymore, but since you're not in town, how do you stay close to the program and, and the players? You know, I credit Shaka a lot to that. Um, you know, really making alumni feel comfortable. Um, 
and just the stat i mean the whole athletic department i mean between broker i mean we've got just such strong ties um scott um i mean and even todd smith you know todd and maggie like we were in the trenches together and <laughs> you know in that weight room and you know i remember when todd got hired um it makes me feel really old <laughs> um but just again like back to the family you know just that that genuine love and care factor that you know they care about what you're doing what's going on you know watching their kids grow up and how they still stay in contact and see their love for Marquette and bringing up memories and things like it's uh Marquette does a great job of keeping us a family <laughs>